Hello, well, everyone, and welcome to this very special guest webinar we've got for you um, with the wonderful uh, Nini Melvin, who we met in Kiental, didn't we, Nini? Had a great meeting there, yes. Really, really good fun. So please say hi on the chat. And um, Kat is uh, from the team is doing the, is looking after the chat this session, so she'll be flagging up any questions you've got. And while people are still joining, I thought I'd just do a little intro. <clears throat> so Human Nature is the name of Nini's project. Um, she's got a very interesting background. She's pre predominantly, well, started off as a dancer, professional dancer, and then she transitioned into becoming a shiatsu teacher and practitioner. And we'll find out in a minute why that happened. Um, and she's just created um, a whole load of things, including this book. And just to show you that we've got one here in Norwich in Shatsu Center here, um, New Energy Work Office. And it's an amazing book, really amazing, very visual. Um, and it matches the sort of artistic kind of nature of Nini's work really, really well. And she's also produced a card deck that she'll show you later. And we've got some charts that she, um, we'll show you as part of this webinar. <clears throat> and here's some pictures of these lovely things she's made, constructed. And let's just see how we, yeah, we've got some more people arriving. We did, we thought Nini would like to find out something before we start about you. So we've got a poll um, ready. And here is the poll. When you touch meridians, <coughs> diagnostic areas and points, you connect with and embody the quality of the elements. So I'm gonna run that poll and we'll just see, um, I'll run it and just see whether you always do, often um sometimes or never embody uh connect with and embody the elements and there's the result for you Nini. look wow you've got a small number about seven percent that never do that so it's going to be all new for them and then Great. sometimes so i think probably by the end of this hour we're going to you'll be able to convert a lot of those sometimes up to the always i've just got that feeling <laughs> Okay, yes. there we are. Yeah. So, Nini, tell us, how did you get involved? In what turned you from a dancer into a shiatsu practitioner? What happened? It's a very funny story. I had a stiff neck. You know, I was a modern dancer, and we did all kinds of wild movement and um, had a stiff neck one day, and I found a chiropractor in the neighborhood, and um, he was a strange guy, and he had a really good idea, though, he had body workers work on people before he gave them the adjustments, before he cracked them. Oh, yeah. So this woman comes in the room and she puts her hands on my neck. And I'm like, where did you learn that? And she told me that she went to the Swedish Institute and the Shiatsu Institute and studied both styles. And I found out I was dancing at the time, so I didn't have a lot of time. And the Shiatsu Institute was only three hours a week. Wow. Uh, for 10 weeks to start. And so I signed up. And so my stiff neck taught me that pay attention to the things that happen in life. They could lead you to wonderful places. Wow, that's a terrific story. There we go. And then, and then you, you then trained as an instructor at the Ahashi Institute, didn't you? You became one of his yeah. main instructors. Yes, I was a student there for four years. It took me a very long time to do the basic training because... I never felt like once through was enough. So I took every course two or three times. That's especially probably really good. Into, yeah. Into Masanaga Meridians, I was like, I need to do that again. I need to do that again. <laughs> so um, by the time uh, four years went by, he asked me to be a teacher there. And I taught there for 10 years. I wow. got to write curriculums. I got to travel all over Europe and train teachers and things like that. So. Very grateful for my background and my training. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, great. So shall we, would you like to, you know, I say, um, I understand you want to start by doing a kind of like a, a kind of like a connecting thing before we put the slides up, yeah? Yes, please. So I'm going to First get out of the way so you can see Nini full screen and she's going to start the session. And as I said in the email, be prepared to move about. It's going to be a very uh, practical session. So here we go. Thank you, Cliff. I just want to also express my gratitude to New Energy Work. I'm so glad that we met, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you. I really appreciate your presence. 
So I would like to begin um, by just having you place one hand on your heart and one on your lower para, around your dantian, around your center of gravity. And today I want to look at these basic questions. What am I made of? What are we all made of? Why are we here? And how do we find balance? How do we find balance in this wild and crazy life, in this wild and crazy world? So one of the things that I do, I'm hoping my tools will be very useful for you. One of the things I do a lot of is I place one hand on my heart and one on my lower belly, and I just stand and breathe. And I will tell you now, I've been doing this for quite some time, and I wake up in the night and I'm lying there with my hands like this as well. And for me, what this helps me to do, and I hope that through breathing into your hands, you'll be able to feel this as well. This helps me to feel the spaciousness that lives in the sacred palace of my heart where my Shem or spirit lives. So the upper hand is my connection to the universe, to the vastness of the universe and how that lives inside my body. So my breath is coming into my upper hand, around my sternum, around my heart, and I'm feeling the spaciousness, the infinite vastness of the universe as it makes up the sacred palace, the space inside me and inside my heart. And my lower hand on my lower belly lower hara, the dantian area, is on my center of gravity. This is where I am being pulled to the core of the earth. My center and Mother Earth's center are united by me breathing and softening and relaxing my lower body, my knees, my hips, downward and surrendering to gravity and being held by the earth. So my human self is here in the center, and my spirit self is here in the upper center. So as I breathe into both hands, and we can imagine that our hands are going all the way through to the back body as well, I'm breathing my spirit into my form. I'm unifying earth and sky inside me. We're made up of earth and sky. And so we embody these qualities. So breathe into these two centers. You might notice there's a little bit of a forward and back rocking that happens sometimes. You might notice that as you inhale, you rise up and as you exhale, you settle down. Allow all of those movements to happen. That is part of the integration and the unification of us being spirit in human form. So as we stand here, and we're going to stand for a little bit, I'm going to share a quote with you. And I would love to have you ponder this quote with me as we look through these different slides that I've created. This quote is, by Hafez, who can comprehend what happens when separation ends? Imagine that your spirit and your form are not separate, they are unified, and that your life is being lived as spirit in human form, not separate. Not I'm running around as a human and then I meditate to be connecting to my spirit, but that at all times, everything is spirit in form. Every breath connects us. And nature shows us this. In the images that follow in these next slides, you can see how you are part of everything. You're one with the universe. So breathe in these images and see how it feels to you to breathe in the oneness of the universe and feel yourself as part of everything. 
Everything is part of you, and you are part of everything. We've all stood somewhere and felt that magic as above, so below, and within. And we have a primordial intelligence within us. The next image shows us this energetic primordial intelligence, this sparkly light of our being. Inside, we know everything already. We can study theories. We can learn all kinds of stuff. But we have this intelligence within us that knows already about who we truly are and about how we are part of everything and everything is part of us. We also have a luminosity, a brilliant, radiant light of our being. The next image shows us this luminosity and radiance. We are millions of beams of light emanating light and love in every direction. This light comes from us into the universe, from the universe into us, and interconnects us all. We are all luminosity. And the next slide shows us that we are density and we are vastness. Our form is made of water, we have the solidity of minerals, of rock, but we are also sky and clouds reflecting in that density. Breathe earth and sky into your form. Feel your spaciousness and your density integrating and unifying. Each breath expanding you from earth to sky, or what I like to call yinward to yangward and sky to earth, or yangward to yinward. The next image shows us that we arrive as spirit in form. We are like a rainbow of light that comes to this earth to live this life. It's not so easy to make sense of how I got here or why I'm here. But I have to trust sometimes and surrender to knowing that my spirit took this human form for some purpose, for some reason, to have this human experience. This is why I am here, to be me having this experience and to be fully, authentically myself. Breathe your spirit and form becoming one. And the next image shows us that we take a body, we unfurl, we have a conception vessel that moves from earth to sky and governs all the meridians that go from earth to sky. In the past, I called them yin meridians, but now I call them yinward to yangward meridians because they show us the movement that connects us between the earth and the sky and our conception vessel governs those energies, the way that we're unique, the way that we're original, the way that our human took this form to be at home here in this body. And we have a governing vessel in the back body. The back body maps our universal journey. We come into this world to serve the whole and the governing vessel governs all the meridians that go sky to earth. I used to call them yang meridians, but now I call them yangward to yinward meridians. They show us how we're connected from the vastness to the density. And I'd like to move on and feel that we have a central channel of light a beam of light that connects us from the light of the sky, of the cosmos, the stars, the sun, the moon, all of the luminosity through us, through our central channel, 
and into the earth all the way to the molten lava that is the luminosity inside the earth. Every breath you take, your central channel is moving from the molten lava to the vastness of the universe and back through you into the earth. Now in this central channel, we have all these portals from the conception vessel and the governing vessel. And I'd like to show you how we can touch these portals. So we're going to keep that lower hand on the lower belly. And we're going to bring the upper hand to the top of the head, the Bai Kuei, the gateway to the infinite. And we're going to play a little bit. Lift that hand. Drop your tailbone. Feel your center of gravity surrendering to earth as your spirit is expanding into the sky. This is why we're here, to fully embody our true self, our spirit in human form. So feel the lightness and the density together. And then this hand, we could explore this for a long time, but I have so much to share. We're going to let that hand come to your navel. And we're going to let the lower hand slide around to Ming Men in the back of the waist. The gate of life in the back, our mouth to the universe. And our mouth, our first mouth, our navel. And breathe into the two hands touching these portals and see what you feel. Can you open to receive personally and universally? Our front body being our more personal relationship to the world. Our back body being supported by the entire universe. And our relationship to receiving that support through this gateway the Ming Men, gate of life. So can you feel that dimension of forward and back as you breathe? And you're also feeling the dimension of earth to sky. And let that hand drop to the center again and let the other hand come to the heart and breathe. Notice how you feel. Do you feel any different than when we started? Do you remember a little bit more what you're made of and perhaps why you're here? And now we're going to go on a journey I like to call it Nene Melvin's perspective on reality. And we're going to go on a journey of the elements. From this place of holding the heart and the center, being in our alignment, in our central channel, we're going to dissolve the hands, soften the body, and just surrender to the water. Take a few minutes to just Curve your spine, drop your head, wag your tail, shake out any holding that you might have, and allow your body to just feel fluidity. Hanging over, relaxing a little bit, swaying. And I would like to encourage us now to feel the water as it flows through your being. How do you move like water? Do you undulate? Can your spine undulate like water? Can you feel that beautiful depth of water moving you? And allow that water to reflect nature's undulations and rhythms. So inner water and outer water become one. You may feel that the water is not flowing through some places and feel free all through these movements, 
to bring your hands to any place that is asking for a little more encouragement to flow. And we're going to unify the yin-yang meridian pairs through each element. So dropping down, feel bubbling well. You could even press into your feet and feel bubbling well going down and opening to the earth and to the waters and the depths of the earth and allow that water to bubble up, rejuvenating, bringing you fresh cleansing, coming up through the inner ankles, coming up through the posterior, the inside of the leg. Can you let that water bubble up the kidney meridian and bring it up, all the way up through the sternum? Feel that rising energy that kidney makes as it moves between earth and sky. And kidney meridian moves toward the sky and meets bladder meridian and goes over the top of the head, flows all the way down the back body. Again, dissolve the illusion of separation of kidney and bladder meridians and feel them become one water earth to sky and sky to earth. Breathing, flowing, and diving into the depth of your being. Who are you as water? Where does your power live? What wisdom did you bring here when you came to earth into this life? That you are here to live in this life. Bubbling up one more time up kidney and down bladder. Feel the ease and flow in the personal water and the planetary water becoming one. And then as we come up this last time, we're going to bring the hands to the lower belly and the lower back to the diagnostic areas for water and close your eyes for a moment. Breathe into these areas. The elements live in the meridians and in the diagnostic areas. For me, this is not no longer a theory, it's reality. I feel when I touch diagnostic areas, the element alive in that area. So in the areas and in the points as well. So I like to bring nature back into the body and connect personal and planetary. So feel that simple undulation of your water element and feel how your diagnostic areas and your water points move like water. And deep inside this water, your essence lives, who you truly are, the deep mystery of your being, the power that you have brought here to serve the whole. In this water, your essence lives like a seed. And now we're going to take that essence from our deep inner ocean, and we're going to drop it down into the earth and let it root. Water is going to give birth to wood. So as we drop our essence into the earth, we dive down and we meet that beginning of the change of the metamorphosis from water into wood, where the seed begins to root. And then it begins to wake up the dream that lives in the water becomes a vision. And that vision starts to wake up and say, oh, I need to grow, I need to stretch. I need to move toward the warmth, toward the light. 
And so we start to rise and we start to stretch. The wood feels a little different than the water, although it's an illusion that they're separate because they're made of each other as well. But we have that river meridian showing us earth to sky, dream to vision, and feel that twisting, that pivoting that happens as the wood looks around, says, yes, I'm growing toward the light. I'm here to bring my gifts to the world. And liver meridian rises up like springtime and meets its partner gallbladder meridian. And gallbladder meridian comes over the head, 20 whole points, and says, okay, I, I see this vision, I have a plan. These are the steps I'm going to take. One step at a time, and it comes through the shoulders and the ribs, sides of the ribs, front, back to the sides of the ribs, and it comes down into the hips, and it comes out to the sides, and then it says, aha, I'm ready to manifest this here on earth. And it drops down and goes all the way through the toes and meets its partner, liver, and says, checking in, did I get the plan right? What else is the vision? Let's listen and let's manifest together. Liver says, yes, this is the vision. Come on the journey, rise toward the light. I have something that I see that I want to manifest. And I stretch into my fullness, and earth meets sky. Sky says, yes, you are here to manifest this plan. Step by step, all bladder meridian distributes the energy, goes down through the ribs, through the hips, and stabilizes us so we can make something happen, turn the dream into reality, and root all the way into the earth. And one more time, that liver meridian says, thank you for listening and following vision. Yes, my life has a purpose, and I'm here to manifest that purpose. And gallbladder says, yes. Let's make this happen. Zigzagging, distributing the energy, making sure all the details are in place, stabilizing and rooting. So what was meant to happen for this life is happening. And it returns and says, okay, I'm going to go back to listening. And now we're going to metamorphosize from wood to fire. So we have this vision, but inside us, there's something that wants to express itself. So imagine you could dive into the core of the earth and all that molten lava is saying, yes, bring that heat, bring that light, bring it into your form. Express who you truly are, create. And we bring that light through us, through our fire meridians, through our central channel, and we begin to express and create. Green from earth to sky, heart meridian, sky to earth, small intestine meridian. Earth to sky, inner fire and outer fire unite. They're not separate. Heart Meridian has something to express. It wants to show the world its light, its love, its creativity. Small intestine is sorting and making sure to burn off, get out of the way, anything that's not in service to the heart. And returns. We also have supplemental fire, which for me goes from the core, from that central channel, out into the world, expressing, circulating the light, 
the creative ideas, and bringing that light from the universe back in, back into this central channel. So we have this core, periphery, infinite, infinite, periphery, core. Core, periphery, infinite. Our protector, earth to sky, triple heater, sky to earth. Infinite, periphery, core. Now play for a few moments with heart, small intestine, heart protector, and triple heater. All four fires, creating, expressing, enjoying, sharing warmth, sharing love. And fire reaches its peak at some time. The summer comes to its peak and everything is blooming and ripening. And fire gives birth to earth. And so we have the beginning of the descending from that expansive time into a bringing toward us, gathering, embodying all that we've created and shared. And we begin to move into the earth time. The spleen meridian takes in, knows what we need to stay in this human form. To break down all that we gather up, Stomach Meridian says, I will bring you what you need. Smell it, taste it, chew it, swallow it. Oh, be so grateful. It's so delicious. And it helps you have a body and be centered and grounded. And it brings you all the way in to your relationship with Mother Earth. And Spleen listens, listens and says, yes, and I have needs and it's okay. I need more. I need some of this and some of that in order to live in a body. And Stomach says, I got it. I'll bring it in and make sure you have what you need. And there's plenty we can actually share it with each other. I've got more of this and you've got more of that. We can take it in and we can share. So Earth creates this roundness in our lives. We're receiving and we're sharing, we're giving. Earth is balancing those energies. Spleen goes Earth to sky. And stomach goes sky to Earth. The only meridian that travels from sky to earth through the front body is the stomach meridian. So interesting. One more time, receiving deliciousness, all you need to be generous, to be fruitful, and stomach. Feeling the gratitude for all you have and having enough to share. And even the harvest comes to an end and the winds of change come. And earth gives birth to metal. We're going to begin to breathe into the chest and the lung meridian and open. Wow, the winds have come. Everything is blowing around, the leaves are letting go, everything's changing. We're taking in all that spaciousness, all that freshness. And we're exhaling sky to earth, large intestine. Let it go down. You can point your index fingers and you can curve your back and give back to the earth what no longer serves you. Earth to sky, lung meridian. Breathing in spaciousness, the essence. And sky to earth, breathing out the excess. Whatever you don't need, you can give back to the earth. She'll compost it and she'll turn it into fertilizer for the future. 
As you breathe in, you remember the true essence of your being. You breathe that essence deep within. And you stand in alignment with your true self, releasing all you don't. One more time, we're going to breathe through earth to sky. One ready. Sky to earth. Large as Who are you as metal? How do you take in and release, exchange? And how do you stand in your alignment as your true self? Scoop up the earth and the sky. Allow your hands to come together with your head. And stand for a moment like a crystal, like a quartz, clear, rooted in the mountain. Soften your knees, drop your tailbone, drop your shoulder blades. Just stand clearly as your true self, your crystal self. Take a deep breath in, stretch up through your fingertips for a moment, and exhale, let your hands come down in front of your heart. Take a deep breath in, your essence lives inside your heart. Your breath makes that flame dance inside you. And we're going to take that essence of our being and we're going to allow it to descend and dissolve into the water. And we're going to go around the whole cycle just a few times, releasing into the water. Allow the rising of the kidney meridian from the sky. And the bladder meridian sky to earth. Water gives birth to wood. Liver meridian rising earth to sky. All bladder sky to earth. Fire is the one. Heart meridian. Earth to sky. Small intestine. Sky to earth. Heart protector. Earth to sky. Triple ear. Sky to earth. Spleen meridian. Earth to sky. 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 Large intestine ready in sky. Just for fun, we're going to go kind of fast. The kidney and bladder. Liver and gallbladder. Heart and small intestine. Heart protector and triple heater. Lean and stomach. Long and large and and dissolve into the water and just shake it out a little bit. Find your ease and fluidity. And slowly roll up and bring one hand to your lower belly and one hand to your heart. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths.
dissolve the illusion of separation. You are everything, everything is you. Spirit, form, water, wood, fire, earth, metal, one. What is how you feel? Make sure you soften your knees and drop your tailbone. Feel the illumination of your central channel connected to earth and sky. And the orbit of conception vessel and governing vessel with all those portals connecting personal and universal. And all the elements dancing, integrating through you, through your meridians and diagnostic areas in your pelvis. And if there's any other place like portals of your back or front that you would like to move your hands to, we'll just take a few deep breaths and allow the hands to go to any portals that are asking for just a little more energy, a little more consciousness, so that you can surrender even more to earth and sky and surrender even more to your true authentic self. Slowly bring your hands back to your heart and your center, welcoming your spirit home deeply in your human form. And slowly allow your hands to dissolve. One last softening of the knees, scooping up the earth, scooping up the sky. And let the palms rest together and drop down through your central channel. Feel yourself surrender even just a little more to earth and sky. And let your hands rest in front of your heart. Take one more deep breath in and out and bow to your heart. Bow to the spirit that came to live this life. And allow the fingers to go downward. Drop all the way down. And let your palms just face the earth. And take a moment to give Mother Earth a little Thank you, a little acknowledgement for giving you what you need to stay in human form here in this life on this planet. I notice how you feel, let the feelings relax. And just take a few moments to walk around. Can you stay with your alignment? Can you stay in the ease of all elements dancing inside and all around you? Can you feel your true authentic self here, now? Everything that ever happened led you to this moment. And let's slowly come back together.
thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. I managed to get, I managed to join in for that last putting it all together thing because I didn't have to do the slides. Oh. <laughs> so that was great. Later and do it all. Watch the replay and do it and, and uh, do it my, do everything myself. But yeah, no, thank you so much. There's been very, some very, very uh, positive things in the chat. Hope everyone really enjoyed that. Um, it's, it reminds me a bit, it's a bit like a cross between dance and Qigong, isn't it, Nini? It feels exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And um, as Kat said, Shiatsu is dance, is one of the things she said in the chat. <laughs> so we've got a few more slides to share, haven't we? Let me just pop those up and we'll have a look. So there's the metal, and then we've got the five element diagnostic. Did you want to say anything more about this? Or? Yes, I just wanted to share that um, when we touch the hara on the back, when we touch the points, the elements are expressing themselves through the diagnostic areas and the points. So when you touch, you can actually touch the earth, feel the earth, touch the wood, feel the wood. These qualities are alive in the body. So um, I made these charts so, and I blended the Japanese diagnostic area system with the Chinese diagnostic point system because I learned them as two different systems and I could never figure out how to integrate them. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, oh, either you do areas or you do points. But for me, it's all the elements. So. For example, if I'm working with the wood and I can see that the wood points are very close to the wood diagnostic areas, wood is wood, it's all there together. So um, I made these charts uh, to help us to integrate the front and back and to remember that nature is expressing itself through not just the meridians, but the diagnostic areas and the points yeah. as well. Yeah. And I think that's the interesting thing about the five elements as part of the theory, because what they do is they take us out into the macrocosm, don't they? Exactly. You know, the Zhang Fu take us in and the mass larger expressions even are going to movement, but the five elements just goes that one step further because that links us with the seasons and with the with nature, yeah. like you say, but it takes us out into the macrocosm. So that's really it's just a really very um, a great way of expressing it like that so visually. Thank you. Yeah, for me, you know, and you can go on to the next slide, Cliff. For me, um, theory is made of reality, right? Like we make all these theories about life, but theory is made of reality. Mm -hmm. And for me, the doing the movement and um, really embodying the elements helps me dissolve the theory back into reality. Sure. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. So in these charts, um, this is again a blend of the Chinese and Japanese systems. Um, what's important for me about these, and I don't know if you can zoom in or not, but you can look for a color and that's the element. Right. So you can see, ah, everywhere there's red, it's fire. Wow, look where the fire lives. Look where the water goes through the fire. So for me, it's a very elementally oriented chart mm -hmm. instead of... Um, like just trace the meridian, you can see the elements as they express themselves. What's different also about this chart is that all the traditional meridians are the solid lines. So you can see the, the difference between the traditional and the Masanaga extensions. Rather than them being yin ones and yang ones, it's the traditional and the extensions oh, in these charts. Okay. Yeah, I'm just putting that. Yeah. Great. Go on if you like. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. This book uh, was a, a very long pregnancy and birth process. Um, mm -hmm. I always knew I'd make a book, and the pandemic gave me the opportunity. Uh, so I made them myself. I published them myself. So the only way to really get them is to go through me and uh, my email, my website. The best way is just to email me, Nene Melvin at Gmail if you want uh, more information about the charts, the deck, the book, um, I distribute them myself. I wouldn't mind finding a distributor, but I haven't yet. Oh, so. wow, that's a lot of work for you. It is. I must yeah. say, it doesn't look like a self-published book at all. It's so professionally done. You must have had help doing the artwork and 
I had so much help. I have so much gratitude for all the help I had. I had an amazing graphic artist who yeah. loves Shinatsu and her husband studies with me. So oh, wow. all of the graphic art that was done was done as an exchange or most of it was. Yeah. Um, I have an incredible role model for the Meridians. Laura Lai Chang is a dear friend of mine. She did all the calligraphy for the book wow. and she did all the expressions of the Meridians, the governing vessel, the conception vessel. We choreographed those together. Yeah. So I had some help and then there's a great cooperative that does publishing. So I used oh. a cooperative. Yeah, it really does look, it does look very, very professional, I must say, it really does, it's, it's amazing. The production standards are very, very high. Um, Thank you. Well, beauty is important to me, you know? Yeah, definitely, absolutely, you can see that. It's a, it is a work of art in itself. Okay. <laughs> so what have we got here? So this is the deck, it's a five element deck of cards, and um, I have the deck on a tray here as well. Oh, great, These can we Oh, yeah. So these are cards that are kind of like a tarot deck, but it's a five element deck. There are 60 cards, 60 images. Each card has a message from nature. I just pulled this one for the group, oh, Integration yeah. which we looked at together already. Um, and each card has a message and then there's a little booklet, oops, inside with the deck. Oh. And each card has a message. So you get like um, a little message from nature and then they come in these cute little bags. So ah, you can great. keep your little cards and book around and <laughs> be important to me. So it had to be aesthetically pleasing as well. So Brilliant. do we have a slide there? I think. Yeah, we've got, I'll put the slides back up. We've actually got um, a couple of questions as well. So we just, uh, just finish the slides off and then we'll go to the questions, I think. Um, I think there's one more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the five element chart. Yeah. So this, for me, um, has been a, something I've been living with for a long time. I created this. I mean, it's gotten more beautiful, I think, through time. But mm -hmm. for me, that, those Chinese charts that have the circles and Roman numerals and things like that, I just couldn't make sense of them until I made them as nature. Right. And so when you see the fire, you see the light, you see the pumpkins, you get the sense, you see the crystal of the metal and the ocean and this yeah. big tree, by the way, it's the oldest oak in Italy. Really? Uh, wow. These, really, these for me help me to understand how we move through the seasons and how the meridians are connected and the heart being in the middle. It's all in service to the heart because our spirit came here, lives in the sacred palace of the heart and is here to have this experience. That's how Mimi's perspective of reality. I hope it's interesting. If uh, you have any more you want to discuss about that, feel free to contact me. Um, I know I have a perspective on reality that has helped me live this life and make sense of it. And I think we all do that. And my question is, do we do it from the mind or do we do it from the heart? Can we create our beliefs and our values based on love instead of fear? Right, wow. Yeah. Nature shows us that. Yeah. Nature shows us that. So, yeah, that's the last slide. Thank you. Brilliant. I'm so happy. Okay, cool. I'll just uh, pop the slide off then. We've got a couple of questions just to take us up. We've got a few minutes yeah. left. Um, so, <clears throat> here we go. There we are. Can you see that? That's from Melanie. I read the review of your book in the Shatsi Society Journal and really want a copy. I think the, I think a friend is going to buy one and bring it to the UK, but I wonder if we in the UK could gather names of everyone in the UK who'd like the book, and then some books could be sent to the UK in bulk and it would make the postage cost cheaper. There we are, something to organize. Thank you. What a great idea. Thank you very much. And actually, fact, I've, um, what I've done is I've put uh, Nini's contact details her email and her website address on the replay email that everyone will get. We had around 500 people sign up for the webinar. So um, who knows, out of those 500 people, you might be able to get a group together and get a mass, a shipment. I'll tell you what, you're going to have excess baggage next time you come over, next time you fly over to Europe. <laughs> I think it might be cheaper if I just carry some suitcases and fly over and bring them to you because- That's a, that's a great idea. 
and um, and Kim wondered if um, if we were going to uh, let me just have a look here. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, she just wants to know if we could have these the, the um, PDFs as a handout, and we will of course load them up to the, in the guest webinar area of New Energy Work. Um, we'll put them in there with um, with the video recording. So those of you who can access New Energy Work either as a free member or as a subscribing member, we'll be able to get hold of the PDFs, which I'll load up for that. So that's a really good idea. Right, okay, here we go. So are there any questions, any other further questions? Um, otherwise we can just finish up. Let's just get back to the chat here. I also wanna say that the images um, that, are, that I showed today are also in the deck and the deck is much easier to transport around, so. Um, yeah, yeah. If, I'm going to ask, I, did, I had one question actually, which I wanted to ask just before we finish up, um, which is how do you use, uh, this is a bit like the angel cards. How do, you, how do you actually use the cards? How does everyone use them? Probably in different ways. I'm hearing from people all over, especially after Cantal of how they're using them. A yeah. lot of people are using them um, to, like I do, before a client, I'll pull a card, I'll have the client pull a card. I'll have them pull a card at the end of the session. Wow. And the messages are always relevant. I don't know how the cards do it, no. but the cards do it. They read truth. They read reality. Um, other people use them in groups, that the group can each pick a card. If you're in a shiatsu class, yeah. you can make a mandala of the five elements All from right. each person's card. So there are many ways, and I'm happy to do, I'll be doing some free online workshops as well to orient people toward the deck so people know how to use it. And I mean, basically, if you pick a card a day, that's a really good way to get to know them. Yeah, it's a bit like the I Ching or something like that. It reminds me of the I Ching, isn't it? That kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, well, look, we have to we have to um, oh, what's in the book. We've got one question. I just um, Alex, the cats flag that up. Um, OK, yeah, I can do the book. <laughs> The book basically takes you on a journey like we did today of what we're made of. So the whole first part of the book is uh, based on, I like to think of it as the Tao. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the basic ingredients that make up life? And the photography images and the calligraphy are uh, messages about what we're made of and how we embody all these qualities. And then it goes element by element and it goes into detail for each element like what is heart meridian actually about what is the core of earth really about so um, i tell stories personal stories about how i learned about these things how nature showed me things how life experiences like loss things like that how i got to um, be gifted by so many lessons that I made sense out of through the five elements and the charts are in there yeah and this and it kind of expands on what we've done in the webinar doesn't it? it kind of expands right out you've got the source points i noticed and um yeah. source you've got points the same graphics that you showed us with the yeah. elements like that we did that we moved yeah. to and then it just expands the whole thing out so it's just like an expanded version a very expanded version of what we've done in the last hour and it shows the first and last points of all the meridians mm -hmm. because um, for me, unifying yin yang is a really important thing in our world right now. We've polarized them. We teach them as opposites and we need to unify and remember that there's no such thing. If you separate them, there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. So the unification of yin yang through the connecting points is, is part of what the book is about as well. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, here we go. We have to leave now. It's like one minute. We've used the hour up. It's just flown past. We've had a fantastic time. And um, the traditional way that people show their appreciation on these webinars is to put hearts in the chat. So if anyone wants to do that, um, you'll probably see a massive string of hearts, which is going straight in there. Look, <laughs> so there's your appreciation right there. Um, we will be putting this on YouTube for you, and it will be going in, into our guest webinar area on new energy work. And I'll put the um, PDFs with the with the uh, video, so it'll be there, so everyone can thank visit. You visit. So thank you, Cliff. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you, everyone, for participating and watching the video. And uh, keep breathing and keep being your true, authentic self. 
Thank you very much. That's a great, a great bit recommendation to finish on. And no doubt we'll see you soon and uh, hopefully okay. get you back on new energy work soon. Okay, bye, bye. everyone. Thanks for, thanks for showing bye. up. See you.